This video is about the mantis shrimp. This is one of the world's deadliest crustacean and it's deadly because it packs a powerful punch and this punch is due to its dactyl club. So let's sit back as we get started with this modeling. Hello, welcome to CM Videos. My name is Dr. Michael O'Craig. We're going to look at first what's the bulligan structure, which is the underlining structure that makes up this uh, mantis shrimp. And from the full dimension of the bulligan structure, we'll generate the representative volume element, which is shown here. And then ultimately, we end up with this RV. And this we're going to use in understanding the behavior of this mantis shrimp. And then finally, these are the sort of results you will get from a compressive behavior of the mantis shrimp dactyl club as it undergoes compressive deformation. The outline we're going to work with here would be, first we'll look at how do you choose what an RV for this bulligan structure would be. And I'm going to do this using a Python script. So I'll look at the Python script a little bit and then how to actually set up the model within Abacus. And then finally, we'll look at some analysis of some results. Again, if you want to explore a little bit more about this. There is a, a video that I've put here. This video is a continuation of that video. So the mantis shrimp here has got a hunting weapon associated with it, which is called the dactyl club. The dactyl club, if you do an SCM section of it, you get a periodic cross section of the club. And looking more closely on that, the architecture of that looks like this, which is a polygon structure. So we'll be modeling the polygon structure as a representative of what this mantis shrimp looks like. So in terms of what we're going to get by the RVE design, so first on the left hand side here, we'll have the length, the width, the height of the overarching design of this RV. So these are the dimensions. The key things that I want you to note here are the minimum angle of this, which is the angle of rotation. I've chosen 10 degrees here and the pitch angle is 90 degrees. So if you look more closely on this, the actual virtual domain that we're working with, we'll start off with one pitch of this plus, which is the nanofiber plus the matrix, and then we generate the, uh, the composite. Now, if we streamline it and cut it out, then we end up with a structure that looks like this, which is the representative volume that we're working with, um, which includes the matrix and the fiber. The matrix is going to be polypropylene and the fiber is going to be e-glass material. If you like this kind of content, please do subscribe to this channel so that when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see. There's only one case study we're going to look at in this case, which is a y-axis compressive deformation on a structure that looks like that. I mentioned that there is a Python script that we're going to use to do this. So this is what the Python script looks like. So again, if you're written the normal abacus input command, import commands. So really the information that we need is around here. So this is kind of where we make changes on the code. So again, if you really want to learn a little bit more about the script, I put a video in the link here that talks about how you can create this bulligan structure using the script. So please do look up for that. The link for downloading this script will be in the description section of this video. So what we have here is the fiber diameter, the volume fraction we're modeling is 20% and some of these other parameters that are essential here. So we have all this information to the end and what we are going to do is that we're going to copy that so control a to select or and control c to copy okay so once we get into our backus what we need to do is to paste the code here and it will run through and it will generate the, the rv of the domain that we are looking at what we need to do is just switch to the assembly module and we're going to match this So we have this as a material. So clearly we don't want the edges the way they are. So we're going to have to trim it out. So what we're going to first do here is to switch this to something like surfaces so that we can look inside. So we'll click on that and select the top edge, select that edge. So what we clearly want to do here is that we want to see if we can create a nice simple structure in the middle. So we're going to extrude from the middle here. So the first thing I need to do is to put a construction line so that it gives me a sense of where I can cut from. So we click on the square box. So one, two, three, four. So I'll click somewhere around there from the center, one, two, three, four. So I'll click there. So that's the structure. And then we'll click on the outside again. So that gives us the domain we are looking for. So we're straight cut. So clearly from here, you could see, all right, we've got a structure that is kind of symmetric from the top and looks all right. Now we're going to do the same on the side. 
So we're going to trim off all the boundaries at the basis there. So th what do we do? So we do the same, click on the side, click here. Now, I'll just have to trim from here to probably the middle there. Okay, and then trim out everything. So this gives us the structure of the domain. So the next thing we need to do is to create the materials. So these are the elastic properties of the fiber. So these are the elastic properties of polypropylene, the metrics. So we add the plastic property. So 40 megapascal is the property of the metrics. So we create the sections. So the polypropylene section. So we've got the e-glass and the PP section. So we'll go back here and do the section assignment. So to do the section assignment, we need to hide, change the cell. We need to hide some parts. So we'll hide the metrics, leaving the fibers alone. We'll select the fiber and this will be e-glass fiber. So we invert that, leaving behind the metrics and we'll select the metrics. So we'll now switch to materials and resume all. So so we have a, a good design now of our fiber and our matrix. Everything is clearly defined. So we now mesh it. Okay, so we're going to use tetrahedron and then we mesh the domain. Okay, so we've got a clear structure with the fiber meshed and the matrix meshed and everything is fine. So first thing we're going to do is that we're going to do the Y top. I'm going to create the set bed on nodes. So and switch this to by angle hover around the top so those are the top sets okay of the y-axis and then we'll do the same for the base so the base sets are all done so the other thing we need to do is to create a reference so if we switch back to the path module reference so I'll pick a reference somewhere there and then create a set so reference point set and is the new reference that we've created there Okay, so these are all done and we've done the section assignment. So if we go to step, so this is a static loading step. Okay, and then our history output will be based on. So based on the set of the reference point and we are only interested in U2. So the two forces, so those are the two things that we're interested in here. So we need to then create a constraint, constraint equation, based on equation. So this will be one, our set will be based on the Y top, degree of freedom two, with respect to reference point, degree of freedom two. So then we'll create our boundary conditions. So fixed Y base, because we're going to do a compression behavior. So we, we go on here, so you turn this up and we clearly want the Y base to be our compression. So we fix it in all three directions and every possible direction, so it's completely fixed. So we can create our Y compression, Y compression load. So we want that on the reference point because we're using the reference point. So every other point we can fix only in the y-axis, so we got minus maybe, so minus 80 millimeters is what we need. So for the load to come down, then we can then look at the job simulation one. So we work with that. And then we can submit this job to run. Okay, so this is the result that you generate. So you can see the structure is going on like great compressive behavior. And this is basically the u-axis. So if you look at the displacement, it gives you the result as well. So when you look at the, the plastic strain compression for this structure, then it gives you the result of what's happening as the structure is undergoing compression. And all these fibers that are oriented in different angles are all contributing even to the behavior of this domain. So if you consider only the fibers alone, you could see the different orientation of the fibers as they are all oriented in different directions and they are creating resistance to the deformation of the structure in all three degree axis in all three dimensions. And this is where the strength of this bulligan structure comes in because every fiber is contributing, resisting the formation in every possible sense. So whether it's in terms of the stress history, it's nicely and uniformly distributed across the whole domain, whichever type of stress, even the 
shear stresses. There's a nice uniform distribution of shear stresses, which means that this structure can take loads nicely in all three possible directions. And this is what makes the Bulligan structure a very powerful structure to work with. And this is really where the structure takes its strength from. So the final thing we need to do is to look at the plot. So to just to get some measure of the data. So what we have here is the RF2 and the U2. So we plot those two together. Then it gives you nicely the displacement profile and the force profile resulting from the deformation and compression. So that's what we'll get from these two results. So if you want to understand the design of this bullion structure and why the strike of the mantis shrimp is so deadly, there's a video that I put here which would have help you in understanding that. That's all I wanted to show you in this video and I'll see you in the next video and bye bye.